The Wandering Jingasa hat is in the Wandering Ronin set, but is weirdly the only piece that uses clay. Real life Jingasa are made of various materials, but at least to my knowledge, not clay. If this is a reference to something, then I don't know, but I'll leave it at that. Before 1.0.5, the healing potion used to not have the stripe it has today. With the only differentiator being shape, it was easily confused with the lesser healing potion, so the stripe was added. The teapot is made of bone china, a type of porcelain made partially using animal bones. This is evidenced by the bones in its crafting recipe. Jungle roses used to take the place of jungle spores, but they were made into a vanity item in 1.0.6. You used to be able to craft an ivy whip and such with them. Despite appearing to be several times the size of the small bee, the large bee only has double the health and five more damage. The candle requires one gold or platinum and a torch to make. The peace candle requires two gold or platinum and a pink torch instead. I guess that little handle really does make it twice as expensive. Sunflowers are the opposite of tombstones, as they hold opposing influence when forming a graveyard biome. This has no relation to plants versus zombies, to my knowledge. In 1.3, the flask of venom used to only state that inflicted venom, but now in 1.4, they changed it to say that inflicts acid venom on your foes. After all, the buff name was changed. Strangely enough though, the tooltip still says that inflicts venom. The peckish debuff that is seen on the constant worlds is the blue background seen on buff icons, but it is unremovable rendering it a debuff. Mothrons are somehow attracted to solar eclipses, meaning they can detect cosmic events and predict where totality is, or I guess annularity because of how solar eclipses work in Terraria. Maggots with 22% bait power are listed as somewhat attractive to fish, while 25% bait power worms are listed as especially attractive. I guess that 3% bait power matters a lot. On a side note, the 15% bait power grubby was modified from especially to somewhat attractive, so I guess Relogic is trying to make their beastry entries consistent with one another. Krypton, Xenon, and Argon are all gases that can be used in fluorescent lamps. However, their colors in-game do not match what the actual gases emit in real life when they are put in such lamps. The underground snow biome is initially generated in trapezoidal shape. The projectile fired by the chlorophyte claymore is predictably called the chlorophyte orb. Both the adamantite and ghastly glaives share a name type. This is similar to the Mithril and Ore Calcum Halberds, except the Ghastly Glaive is not a hard mode ore thing. All yo-yos have the same use time of 25 ticks, or around 0.416 seconds. This is seen as fast in-game. Teleporters are made of foreground blocks, meaning it is actually possible to hammer them. They still work in this way, even though it feels super wrong. Rolling cacti do just about two-thirds the damage of a typical boulder. Of course, cacti bounce and explode as well. Very strangely, Cursed Inferno makes enemies take slightly more knockback, 10%. This is weird for a fire debuff. Hearts are a literal item in Terraria. They can be placed in the inventory through inventory editing, and are uniquely invalid for duplication in journey mode. Unlike the normal mimics, the present mimic has a tongue sticking out, similar to the bio mimics. The most popular mod of all time since Team Mod DLC released on the Team Mod Workshop is Magic Storage, followed by Calamity Mod and Calamity Mod Music, predictably. A few other notable mods like Boss Checklist, Recipe Browser, Lights and Shadows, Alchemist NPC, Calval, and Fargo's are also high on the list. Also, a lot of QOL. If you look closely at the key of night, you can see the lower pin or lever on the key is longer than the upper one. This is reversed from the similar looking shadow key. The zoologist is actually a victim of a curse, with her being cured of her curse in the credits. This results in her losing her ears, hairdo, and tail. The cyborg used to have a straight antenna on its head before being switched to a side-mounted light. All of the dogs in Terraria share similar shapes, except the corgi. In Chinese, the game uses diminutives to refer to the dogs, with Gogo for dog, Malmi for cat, and Tutu for bunny. These names sound cuter, like doggy kitty and bun bun, I guess? That's how it sounds to me. Before 1.2, apparently lava used to cause drowning as well. It was changed when they added honey, which can drown you. Must be a very sad way to go. You used to need to kill 20 marine animals at the minimum to craft a Neptune shell, 15 goldfish, and 5 sharks. Now that it's dropped in a creature to deep, you only need to kill 50 of these on average, or 25.25 on expert, if you're feeling merciful. Bunnies are not created equal. Domesticated bunnies are apparently 50 times harder than those in the wild. Must be great. Ale is much more price effective to get drunk on, with it costing 50 copper per minute of intoxication. Meanwhile, the high-grade sake from the Traveling Merchant costs you 125 copper per minute. What a scam. Before 1.3, Pinky was just a regular slime that dropped 1 to 2 gel. It really wasn't worth it to kill then, other than the 1 gold it drops, of course. 
the elf Melter's internal name is Eldmelter, which is a misspelling. And finally, the bat wings lose two supporting bones and crashing into wings from the broken bat wing. The Clockwork Assault Rifle's timing is very particular. The item itself states that it has a use time of 12 ticks, or very fast, which is the total time it takes for it to release all three shots. The delay between the shots is slightly longer, at 14 ticks, making a 26 tick total attack rate. Rainbow torches are the only torches in the game which change brightness through their oscillation, ranging from negative 33% relative brightness, all the way to negative 66%, when it becomes the dimmest torch in the game. The only other oscillating torch, the Demon Torch, maintains a constant brightness of negative 40%. I actually made an entire video on the minutia of torches if you're interested in that. Marshmallows have the shortest food duration in the game, at just one minute of well-fed. Interestingly, cooking it buffs this tenfold to a pretty respectable 10 minutes of well-fed. For one silver, that ain't bad. The Granite Golem's description refers to it and the Granite Elemental as the product of magic spirits, though the Granite Elemental doesn't refer to this in any way, perhaps because the elementals are distinct. Most all chandeliers are symmetrical, with the exception of the pillar chandeliers. Gotta be different, after all. On the 3DS version of Terraria, Softcore or Classic Character Difficulty is the only character difficulty available to play on. Before 1.4.0.5, Green Jellyfish, the hard mode variant of Jellyfish, would completely replace Blue Jellyfish upon the transition to hard mode. Afterwards, Blue Jellyfish were made able to spawn in case you wanted a Blue Jellyfish kite in hard mode or something. This methodology was also applied to a few other mobs that acted the same way. The chance for a traveling merchant to sell you 11 items at once is 1 in 98,304, or roughly 0.001725%, and only in expert mode or higher. As the traveling merchant has a 22.12% chance of spawning every day, it would take 444,412.3 terrarian days on average to get this. Assuming you can check this merchant instantaneously every day and you use the maximum journey mode time boost of 120 times, it would take 1,481 hours, or 61.7 days of waiting on average. When the wyvern dies, the soul of flight is dropped by the head segment of the wyvern, and it will remain there, floating, until the player collects it. In 1.4, the star in the bottle's area of effect was increased by 153%, from 8,400 square tiles to 21,250 square tiles. The same applies to the heart lantern. The nurse is an advocate for social distancing, as shown in a quote of hers. The most common AI in the game is unsurprisingly the Fighter AI, which covers the standard moving towards you and attacking you with contact damage enemies. It covers 127 NPCs. The second most common AI, the Passive AI, covers town NPCs and critters, and it's pretty self-explanatory what it does. It covers 68 NPCs. The Little Eater is 7% less resistant to knockback than a standard Eater of Souls, but a Big Eater is 8% more resistant. An interesting note. While on a mount, the player becomes blurrier than usual. I don't know why this happens, but eh, it's a very minor thing. I've really only noticed since I record so much of this footage at 200% zoom scale. Every butterfly sprite when shown in an inventory is flat, except for the gold butterfly and hell butterfly, which are shown laterally. I guess if you count the prismatic lacewing, that one should be included as well. As the game progresses, the game gives damage and defense boosts to NPCs to make sure that they don't get instantly mauled by some 400 health green slime as soon as hard mode is entered. Interestingly, these buffs apply to the Dryad differently due to her damage being dealt through a damage debuff, Dryad's Bane. Due to this, Queen Slime and the Empress of Light do not give the Dryad damage buffs of 15% each, unlike the other NPCs. The Traveling Merchant will begin to defend himself with a Pulse Bow as soon as hard mode begins, but he will not actually sell you it until post Pantera. The standard yellow in Terraria used in the spawn point message is hash FFF014, and the soft green used in texts such as those shown when breaking shadow orbs is hash 32FF82. As impending doom approaches, you may notice that the volume of the music in the background will lower, then become silent. This preps the atmosphere for the semi jump scare of the Moonlord spawn. 0x33's Aviator is the only Master Mode exclusive item not to have the Fiery Red rarity. This is because they are a dedicated item that used to be hardcore exclusive in 1.3. In 1.4.1, the tooltip of the Summoner Emblem was revised from Summon Damage to Minion Damage. Although its actual effectiveness is unchanged, it still boosts all summoning items, even mounts. The cute Fishron mount receives a drastic speed boost to 82 miles an hour whenever it enters water, and this boost persists when it leaves water for 6 seconds. 
Well, actually the boost gets slightly weaker, 5% weaker in fact, meaning it will only reach a max speed of 80 miles an hour. Garden gnomes spawn in front of dirt walls above zero feet and living wood walls at any height. Curiously, dirt walls will no longer spawn garden gnomes during a solar eclipse, for some reason. The world generation screen describes corruption as disease-like, while the crimson is described as macabre and grotesque. In the beast tree lore, gem squirrels were formed from squirrels that ventured too deep, got lost, then got cursed by residual gem energy. What a rough existence. Different world seeds show different icons based on type. The drunk world will show a regular tree with both world evils, not the bees opts for a bee-infested rich mahogany tree, for the worthy and celebration mark 10 go for yellow willow and pink sakura trees respectively, and the constant opts for a depressing looking evergreen. The demon conch will not work if there are no tiles to stand on in the center of the underworld, meaning you can't unintentionally kill yourself with it. Meanwhile, the magic conch will simply teleport you to the farthest tile from the player that's not covered by liquid. This typically works pretty well, putting you just before the waterline on the farther ocean. The drunk world seed is interpreted as a number, so the amount of leading zeros in 5.16.20.20 doesn't matter. It's all the same to the generator. Since Terraria uses an algorithm, CRC32 to be exact, to generate numbers from strings and world seeds, phrases such as now aunt brush in all lowercase can also be used to generate a drunk world, as they compute to 5.16.20.20 when passed through the algorithm. The Obsidian Horseshoe takes the functionality of the Lucky Horseshoe and the Obsidian Skull, but it does not inherit the one defense of the skull itself. Either way, it doesn't matter since literally no one ever uses this item. The Brand of the Inferno was buffed three separate times in 1.4, first getting a buff of plus 41 damage, and then getting a size buff of plus 13%, followed shortly by a speed buff of 5 ticks. Rare clouds such as these are spawned with a 0.67% chance, so 1 in 150 clouds will be a rare cloud. According to the lore for the Meteor Head, fragments of the Meteor are actually alive, and they form the Meteor Heads that come out and attack you. Kinda interesting for what many assume is just warm, inanimate space rock. Before 1.0.5, Dungeon Guardians didn't exist. Instead, Skeletron Heads would just spawn repeatedly until the player died. The downside with this is that they don't instantly kill you, and if you killed one, the dungeon would then open. To fix this, we got the infamous Dungeon Guardian. The Rod of Discord used to take one-fifth of health when used under Chaos State in 1.2.1.2, then that was reduced to one-sixth of health in 1.2.3, and then finally one-seventh of health in 1.3.0.1. Similarly, Chaos State was reduced from 10 to 8 to 6 seconds during this time frame as well. The console achievement, Ophthalmologist, that activates upon killing the twins, actually shows two instances of the Eye of Cthulhu, not Retinazer or Spasmatism. Desert Spirit Lamp's sprite orientation swaps from left to right when used to craft a spirit flame weapon. Both the Cochineal Beetle and Lac Beetle enemies, which drop the red and violet husks, are named for real insects used for dye. The real insects are not beetles, however. The Lac dye also isn't violet in real life, as in the case of the Lac Beetle. Sword Shine spawn chances were altered in 1.4, with the amount of shrines now being based on RNG. There's even a chance for there to be zero shrines, even in large worlds. Of course, this was balanced by making all sword shrines real, instead of the 67% chance to be fake found in 1.3. Creepers don't drop souls, which is probably to prevent the easy farming of souls of night via this method. The same applies to King Slime in 1.4, but pre-1.4, it was an extremely efficient way to grind souls if you had access to the summons. Unlike the King Slime's katana, the Queen Slime's trophy actually shows a wing feather, even if it might look like a really fat sword at first glance. The Starlight's physical sword projectile doesn't actually deal damage by itself. All of its damage is instead dealt by the streaks of light it creates. In the For the Worthy Seed, it is impossible to achieve full beast tree completion, and therefore get the Universal Pylon. This is because bunnies and demons don't spawn on this seed, instead always being replaced with explosive bunnies and voodoo demons. Chlorophyte Ore can turn dirt blocks into mud to facilitate its expansion, which it can then turn into Chlorophyte itself. This works against the evil spread of the biome, as Chlorophyte itself also protects nearby tiles from being converted by nature. The Life Drain's buff, Life Drain, gives you 2.5 life per second of regeneration, which is 2.5 times what a Heart Lantern provides, or 5 times what a Campfire's constant healing rate is. There are 11 moon sprites in Terraria. Your world will decide randomly what moon style each world has, and this is stored in the world file. These are normal, yellow, ringed, mithril, bright blue, green, pink, orange, and purple. The final two are only shown during the frost moon and pumpkin moon events, and override the natural moons. 
the Spelunker potion became ever so slightly more rounded in 1.3 versus its original sprite in 1.2. The hardy saddle item itself seems to include the turtle shell, and therefore the turtle itself on the sprite. This is the opposite to the slimy saddle and gelatinous pillion, which don't show the slime on their sprites. And finally, this flesh sink seems to not only have eyes on its left side, it's leaking blood. I'm sure my sanitation expert would have a problem with that. The crate potion used to require deathweed, moonglow, and amber but now requires Shiverthorn and Waterleaf in place of Deathweed. This by itself isn't interesting, but what is interesting is that this was due to a typo in the code that was fixed in 1.4.0.5. In 1.4, Adamantite, Titanium, and Chlorophyte bars, or costs, were all reduced by 1. The same applies to Crimtain and Demonite, but that change was made in 1.3 instead. Before 1.3.1, the Auto Hammer used to get its reciprocating motion from a lever attached directly to the shaft of the gear. Today, the reciprocating mechanism seems to be attached in the metal part instead. The Fire Gauntlet originally did not fully transfer mechanical glove boosts to it, with it only gaining 9 or 10% speed and damage versus the mechanical glove's full 12%. In 1.4.1, this was remedied, with it now giving the full 12%, as well as increasing size and inflicting Hellfire, an on-fire plus debuff, dealing 15 DPS versus 4. During the hollow and during the day, you may see a winged unicorn pass by in a distance. So yeah, apparently unicorns can fly, they just choose not to. Before 1.4, the Panic Necklace and Band of Star Power used to be mutually exclusive due to the biome lockout, but they were made craftable from each other using Ecto Mist. Curiously, the Bowl of Soup doesn't require a bowl to craft anymore. The reason for this is unknown. The sprite used when the Desert Tiger is mid-pounce is the shadowy outline sprite contrasting with the other sprites used. The fancy spawn effect observed when the Empress spawns is called a Death Aurora in the game code. Also, for all of those who don't believe the Empress of Light isn't smiling, it's a nose. But don't take my word for it, take Chrono's word. If you check the water height exactly, the Terrarian can breathe perfectly fine even when their nose sprite is clearly below water. The Shark Fin doesn't actually have a 100% chance to drop from sharks, but instead a 98% chance. There's no reason for this 2% discrepancy as far as I know, and I've always treated like it's a guaranteed chance anyway. The Guide to Critter Companionship protects critters from more than just direct player attacks. It also protects the critters from traps and fallen stars. The Guide to Critter Companionship is, however, useless against explosive bunnies, I meaning you can accidentally kill them if you were on For the Worthy, for example. Just like gel, shark fins change coloration based on the first item in the stack. The colors are based on the type of shark killed. Since most of our shark fins come from ocean or statue sharks though, this is a rather obscure fact. Landmines are one of the only ways to damage players who aren't in PvP mode, and they will die PvP death when killed. This means they won't drop money and will respawn with full health. The chance to obtain at least one paladin shield after killing 100 paladins is 99.9999537% and it is 99.9999997% at 150 kills. Beyond this, my calculator sadly runs out of precision. The buff that increases your movement speed the most is the Panic buff gained from the Panic Necklace. The debuff that decreases it the most is the Ooze debuff from the Ogre mini-boss, found in the Tier 2 and Tier 3 Old Ones army events. The Molotov Cocktail uniquely deals only 65% damage to the Eater of World segments, 14 base damage instead of 23 base damage. As far as I know, this property is only shared with the Clinger Staff, which deals half damage against worm enemies, and the Golden Shower, which only deals 75% damage to Destroyer and Probes, but only in Expert Mode. If you know of any other exceptions like this, let me know. There are four non-light pets that actually provide light, them being the Baby Truffle, Cursed Sapling, Shadow Mimic, and Volt Bunny pets. If you switch your Terraria to Simplified Chinese, you get a bit of a spacing issue on health and mana probably because they didn't opt for the English abbreviations HP and MP. The three dimmest light pets in the game are the Shadow Orb, Crimson Heart, and Magic Lantern. Every mobile app icon used to have some variation of the old Terraria character holding or using something, until 1.3 when they just set it to the iconic Terraria tree. Despite expert zombies having a chance to spawn holding a zombie arm, these zombies don't have a higher chance to drop them. I thought they did, but that's probably just caused by the drowned tridents. Armor with illegal modifiers works just as an accessory would. For example, this menacing solar flare armor would give 12% damage above what the armor gives by default. 
The Brain of Cthulhu on Journey Mode Difficulty has the only boss health value that is 3 digits, and only 500% health for the last phase. Due to the Crimson Heart emitting blood, turning off blood in Gorgeous makes it look like it's steaming. Most enemy kites have a drop rate of 4% from the enemies, with the exception of the Bone Serpent Kite at 6%, and the two Jellyfish Kites at 2% each. The requirement for the Thunderstorm is that wind speed hits 20 miles an hour and that rain is at 50%. However, the Thunderstorm will not stop until wind hits 16 miles per hour and the rain is at 40%. So it is possible to have a waning Thunderstorm that is under the starting conditions. Potted trees show varieties of trees that do not grow normally in Terraria, that being the cedar as well as the forest jungle and hollowed palms and bamboos. Interestingly, the potted bamboos don't resemble any bamboo actually seen in the game. To find 3 to 13 platinum ore in a slime as a bonus drop has a combined chance of 1 over 20 times 1 over 32, so 1 over 640 or 0.15625%. This is true of ore of any kind, even copper ore. Lava slimes are one of the only slimes do not drop gel on death. Instead, the only things lava slimes drop are coins. The message, the ancient spirits of light and dark have been released, does not actually appear when the wall of flesh is defeated. It appears when the two biomes are done generating, which can be a bit later depending on your computer hardware. Wormhole potions found in slimes are replaced with recall potions within a single player world, as to not be redundant. In any world with over 200,000 hive blocks, hive blocks are considered as stone blocks, and crispy honey blocks are considered as hard and sand when used to place the world evils. This basically only occurs in not the bees worlds. Prior to 1.3.2, you were not able to choose the world evil. However, this option was added as long as you have entered hard mode in at least one world. Both the Goblin Battle Standard and Pirate Map require at least 200 health to use them, which is also the requirement for the invasions to spawn in the first place. The conditions for cactus to spawn naturally are very peculiar. It can spawn on any sand block on the surface layer that isn't hammered or actuated, and that isn't close to the edge of the world, more specifically, more than 378 tiles from the edge. This is to prevent them from spawning in the ocean. The sand block also must have space above and to the side of it, and cannot be submerged in liquid. More than 10 sand blocks and fewer than 4 cactus blocks must also be present in a 13 by 5 rectangle around the sand block. Only in this case is a cactus eligible for spawning. The Drax tooltip used to say, not to be confused with the ham saw, but was changed to say pick saw when the pick saw is actually added in 1.2. Old players might know how hollowed armor used to be crafted with every hard mode ore and souls, instead of hollowed bars, which were introduced in 1.2. Not me though, when 1.1 released, I was 5 years old. The Goblin Scout's beastry entry seems to give reason to why goblin armies are so quick to follow the goblin battle standard. Apparently it makes them see the land as a colony to conquer. In 1.3, the bloody spine lost its fifth vertebra, and became much more curved. The chance for a water bowl is as follows. Every book platform in the dungeon has a 50% chance to have a book generate on it, and that book has a 2% chance of being a water bowl. This means 1 in 100 platforms will generate a water bowl in the dungeon. During a blizzard, you may notice that the player will begin to squint if they are exposed to the outside air. Grenades were given a more pineapple-like look in 1.4, with their ridge-like streaks more resembling the pineapple frag grenades that are well known in popular culture. Prior to 1.3, spectre bars did not exist, with spectre armor and tools instead being crafted with chlorophyte and ectoplasm. The bar was presumably added to simplify crafting recipes, and possibly to bring it in parity with shroomite, which was a bar from the very beginning. The North Pole snowflakes are unique in the fact that they are affected by the wind. Other drop projectiles, such as the cursed darts rain, are not affected in the same way. One may think that the tungsten and silver bullets are the same, but like all ore pairs, tungsten is still stronger. It has a knockback value of 4, or weak, versus 3, or very weak, found on the silver bullet. The depth meter was once craftable with 10 copper bars, 8 silver bars, and 6 gold bars, but this was changed in desktop 1.2. Even more so is that you can only craft it with copper, silver, and gold. So if you have the wrong ore, then tough luck. And finally, the largest update gap in Terraria was between 1.3.5.3 and 1.4.0.1, lasting 3 years and 21 days. The Mandible Blade is referred to as the Antlion Claw internally, even though the blade is literally a mandible, i.e. part of the mouth. I guess the blade must have originally been a claw, but was changed into a blade later into production. 
Platinum coins are worth 100 times the value of their gold counterparts, but the ore ore bar sell value itself is only 50% more than gold. Every minion summoning staff in the entire game consumes 10 mana on summon, except the new Flink staff, which consumes just 5 mana. Generally, this is of no issue as no one runs out of mana on a one time summon. If you look at all the sprites of all the Nebula Pillar enemies, you may notice that every single one of them has their brain exposed to the world. Maybe they just copied the Moon Lord's great A idea of putting his heart outside his ribs, but hey, par for the course. The Lizard Altar emits 10% of the light of a person using the Shine Potion buff. The trigger radius for Plantera to spawn from the breaking of a Plantera's bulb is a rhombus with diagonals of 50 tiles. Hellstone has a special property that allows it to not burn in lava, similar to Fire Blossom. As a block in Hell, this is necessary if not redundant since its high rarity of green stops it from burning anyway. This was because it was only given this high rarity in 1.1, so the special exception was necessary before that. The most expensive fish that is also edible is the Chaos Fish, a very rare catch that sells for 3 gold. The blue body of the Sharkron Balloon becomes pink when turned into a horseshoe balloon. The Diamond Gemstone Block, when placed, shows bluish diamonds reminiscent of Minecraft. However, the held item sprite for the same block seems to show the diamonds in their natural color, which is colorless white. When attacking granite golems with the Bone Javelin, the penetrated debuff damage stacks during their invincibility, dealing massive damage when the invincibility expires. Kind of a neat quirk with the debuff. In Expert Mode, the Pumpkin Moon and Frost Moon progress twice as quickly, as point values are doubled. Despite the enemies being yet harder in Master Mode, the points do not scale in this difficulty. Another fun fact about the point system. Before 1.3.0.4, the invasion progress could overflow when the point value exceeded 32,767, the signed 16-bit integer limit. Basically, the number got too big for a number sort of 16 bits to handle, and it would go from wave 22 way before wave 1. Multicore lighting used to be included in Terraria 1.3, but this was removed in 1.4. Apparently, it set the number of threads used to render lighting effects, but I never really noticed anything with it. All I did was turn it to the max to flex my number of CPU threads. Amber is the same cell price as Diamond, but is less powerful and used to craft gem-based items, especially its torch. It is well known that in 1.2, developer wings would give you lethal debuffs upon wearing them, similar to Red's Potion. This was only added in 1.2.0.2, when you could safely wear dev items in the short time between 1.2 and 1.2.0.2, a time span of just 3 days. In 1.2, the Chlorophyte Drill originally could mine Lizard Bricks, despite being obtained before Plantera and Golem. In the same 1.2.0.2 update mentioned previously, the devs found out and hard nerfed it to 190% power, meaning it couldn't even mine Chlorophyte. Just 6 days later though, the devs realized that nerfing the Chlorophyte Drill to be the terrarian equivalent of the Golden Pickaxe was bad, and gave it the neutral 200% pickaxe power it has today. Of all the jellyfish, only the hard mode green jellyfish actually inflicts a debuff, the Silence debuff. Before 1.2.2, presents had 3 different colors and didn't stack, but afterwards presents were changed to drop as a new single present item. Old presents, as they're still in the game as different items, are still stable and functional. It's hard, the achievement granted when entering hard mode, depicts the souls of hard mode. Clockwise, there are Might, Sight, Night, Fright, Light, and Flight. Note how the console exclusive soul of Blight is excluded, as was never included on modern versions of Terraria. Prior to 1.4, the Dread Nautilus was referred to as the Blood Nautilus, and was prominently featured in the 1.4 trailer. In the end, it got a name change and became a rather minor part of the update, being obscured behind the Empress of Light, Queen Slime, and the obscure Blood Moon fishing mechanic. Hey, at least a staff it drops is literally carrying you until Terra Prisma. The sonar potion will always display what is reeled up, except in the case of the Duke Fishron, which is just nothing. The Molten Hammocks and Lucy the Axe have unusually high axe powers for pre-hard mode, having the same powers as Luminite Hammaxes. They are, however, beat by the totally not a guitar, Axe. The Horrified debuff is just an even more terrified version of the poor soul from the weak debuff. The Bleeding debuff does not allow life regeneration, which is a particularly annoying debuff on players. When inflicted on enemies using the Tazona, it actually causes their health to decrease, even though that's not what the Bleeding debuff actually does. All the banned accessories used to have 2D side view sprites, but they were updated into superior shaded and 3-dimensional like sprites in 1.3 and onwards. Before 1.2, the Werewolf buffs only used to trigger on the full moon instead of every night, like they do now. This was more consistent with the Werewolf mythos, but was less useful as an actual accessory. The release Lantern Soul during the Lantern Night event will stay aloft for a total of just 16 seconds, much shorter than its background kin. The sound the Lunatic Cult makes when it spawns has always been heard by me to be And You're No More. And you're no more. But I have no clue what it actually says. It's just too distorted. Harpies used to be a lot more fat and pale, but they were given a lot more human-like appearance in 1.4.0.1. 
Their part human arm stubs are also removed, so they look less like a human in a wingsuit. The ancient light that the lunatic cultist uses is actually a round sprite, even though it's a star-shaped sprite in-game. This is similar to how spell balls like the Water Sphere, Water Bolt, Burning Sphere, and Rune Blast are all just circles with particle effects trailing behind them. The projectile itself is not that fancy, it's the shaders that make it that way. If you throw the guide voodoo doll into a pool of lava very close to the edge of the world, the wall of flesh will despawn right after spawning out of bounds. So, I got this fact from the wiki, and it's been there for a long time, at least a couple years. Whenever I try doing this, it seems to not work, so maybe I'm just bad, or they fixed it or the wiki is wrong. Who knows? Either way, I'm just gonna put this here instead of making this a 49 fact video, so maybe you can try with this, I don't know. Despite being only worth 5 silver, using a fallen star on a wooden boomerang increases the value by 90 silver, from 10 silver to 1 gold. In 1.4.2, they added the ability for the Star Cannon to deal critical hits, as it was bugged beforehand. This same issue did not apply to the Super Star Shooter, its upgrade. Fallen Stars have a function when used, similar to the Mana Crystal. This is a leftover from the 1.0 days when you used Fallen Stars to restore 20 mana. It even inflicted Potion Sickness. Goldfish used to be obtained by killing goldfish mobs, and were crappy healing them for 20 health each, similar to today's Mushroom. In 1.2.3, this was changed, with them becoming critters with the introduction of the bug net. Today, you can still craft soup with goldfish, harkening back to their consumable roots. The way the aerial bane determines an enemy is airborne is quite particular. If there are no solid blocks within 12 blocks underneath the enemy, it is airborne, and the bow receives a 50% damage boost. Fledgling wings used to be relatively difficult to obtain as a non-journey mode character, requiring fishing from azure and sky crates. Today, they are just a one-third chance from skyland chests, which is much simpler. The Empress of Light's sound effects make use of both channels of the audio, giving the sound effects a sense of swishing from left to right. Stoned is more dangerous than webbed. Webbed also stops you mid-air, while stone will cause you to fall like a rock and then die. Mana Sickness's damage reduction is 5 times the amount of seconds in percent. For example, it is 25% at 5 seconds and 50% at the maximum duration of 10 seconds. This effect is also multiplicative, so it applies after all their buffs and damages have already been tallied. When warned, Nature's Gift is much more glimmery on the outside compared to the rather tame shading of the similar Jungle Rose Vanity item. The four items that have a custom back sprite when in use are the Contaminator, Heat Ray, Leaf Blower, and Elf Melter, all of which are Flamethrower-esque contraptions. A neat little attention to detail is that the slow fall granted by the umbrella is disabled when used for attacking. This makes sense as a parachute wouldn't work if you just turned it 90 degrees on its side. The mechanical cart seems to be made of the individual parts of the mechanical bosses, with the wheels being the two eyes, the wagon piece being a segment of the destroyer, and the battery piece being some part of Skeletron Prime. It's unknown what part the battery part came from. The bone helm is not actually a helmet, but it is an accessory. It has the ability to override all cosmetics on your head as long as it is equipped though, so it does show as a helmet. This is different from the other armor-like accessories, like the arc diving gear, which are always overridden by helmets no matter what. Ghosts are able to override disabled enemy spawns in journey mode, as their method of spawning is different from normal. In the trading card artwork for the Underworld, you can actually see a life crystal in the Underworld, despite the fact they do not naturally spawn in the Underworld within the game. This is because before 1.2.3, life crystals were actually able to generate within the dungeon and Underworld. And lastly, Mobile used to show gold hearts past 200 HP, but this was changed when life fruits were added. There are six suspicious-looking items in the game. The suspicious-looking eye, suspicious-looking egg, suspicious-looking skull, suspicious-looking tentacle, suspicious-looking apple, and the suspicious grinning eye. To further make it more confusing, the suspicious-looking tentacle spawns a pet called the suspicious-looking eye. For those who are curious, that took me over 50 attempts to record. The Japanese-exclusive console version of Terraria uses the name Terraria, romanized as Terraria. It seems like they decided that a double consonant was unnecessary in Terra, which makes sense. Similarly, the Chinese version is called Tai La Rei Ya, which has turned the R in Terra into an L. This is because R's in Bill of Words are sometimes hard to transliterate in Chinese, much like L's in Japanese. Heart arrows in Mobile Edition were unique in the fact that they inflicted stun, which would freeze any enemy in place for 1.5 seconds upon contact. However, uniquely, there was one enemy that was immune, the Crack Dragon himself, Duke Fishron. As the Starving debuff reduces the player's health by 2% per second, the Terraria player can live 50 seconds, or 50 in-game minutes, while starving. 
the actual Daybreak projectile has very slightly different ornamentation on the spear point versus the sprite shown in the inventory. In versions prior to 1.4, it was profitable to craft party bullets. The profit was around 3 copper per round. However, it was nerfed in 1.4, so you now lose money crafting them. Added in 1.2.2, the Reindeer Bells were the first mount added to Terraria. Apparently in 1.2.3, the buff name was actually misspelled, with Rudolph being spelled as Rudolph. The gold fish bowl has a tooltip is a gold bowl, or a gold fish, a reference to the language ambiguity in its name. Funnily enough, as it is crafted with a gold goldfish, and the bowl itself is gold, you could technically be correct to call it a gold gold goldfish bowl. On a possibly related note, the gold goldfish itself has a tooltip possibly referencing the supposedly elusive gold gold goldfish. While many statues do not drop items in specific circumstances, such as being killed through autonomous means, the mimic has a hard-coded 0x factor, meaning it will never drop loot from a statue. This was added for pretty obvious progression reasons. Similarly, the only statue that has no drop chance factor and allows autonomous killing is the slime statue, probably to allow easier collection of the slime staff and gel to use for ammunition. Apparently, when they were introduced, the fossil pickaxe, tree glow, and world glow would fall through blocks, ignoring collision checks when dropped. All I know of this is the wiki blurb, though. Meteor armor has a history of becoming cheaper over time, as its cost has been reduced by 5 per armor 3 separate times in its entire history. Knockback has a cap system that gradually makes knockback less effective as it increases. This is why at 20 knockback, a slap hand only actually deals 14.9168 base knockback. It's been reduced. I didn't do any of the math on this, so this is from a wiki blurb. I'm saving my Terraria math brain cells for other videos. A shucked oyster is worth 20 silver, while an unshucked oyster is worth 1 silver. That's right, you get a 2000% return on your money just by right clicking. Flippers do not just allow you to swim, but also grant a hidden 10% movement speed bonus in liquid. Of course, the flipper potion is still better, as it doesn't have the anti-slowdown buff that the potion has. Prior to 1.4.1, the world gen algorithm did not try to generate the jungle away from the corruption, which could lead to you getting screwed pretty hard in hard mode if you weren't lucky. The tick counter in Terraria is reset every dawn and dusk, going up 54,000 ticks, or 900 seconds during day, and 32,400 ticks, or 540 seconds during nighttime. This is unlike Minecraft, where the tick system is continuous throughout the days. I'm not sure what the limit in that game is, but it's probably 9 quintillion, so the 64-bit integer limit. The depth meter declares the area 80% toward the top of the world to be space, but there are of course other definitions. Above 50%, you can fish for space fishing items. Above 55%, those pesky wyverns can spawn, and your hair dye changes. Above 65%, pre-hard mode space enemies like the Harpy can spawn. To be clear, Harpies can spawn 55%, but only in hard mode. At 83.3%, gravity finally starts to decrease gradually, up to 100%, top of the world. Despite the magical harp making the same note sound no matter what, it actually produces three different projectiles. The eighth note, tied eighth note, and quarter note. Apparently, Terraria has six unimplemented achievements. Behind the mask, slay the insane cultist, a mad magician with powerful spells. It seems like this one has been made redundant by obsessive devotion. Davy Jones's locker, defeat the flying Dutchman, the sails of the plundered skies. Winterhearted, defeat the Ice Queen, Wicked Witch of the Coldest Nights. Pumpkin Smasher, defeat the Pumpkin, the Spooky Lord of Hollow's Eve. Independence Day, defeat the Mothership, Overminds of the Martian Invaders. Obviously this one's a reference to the movie. And finally, Hex Education, defeat a Goblin Summoner, Conjurers of the Darkest Flames. This is a reference to sexual education taught in schools but for the Shadowflame Hex doll. The sprite for the Rainbow Torch actually does contain every color of the rainbow. Looking at you, Rainbow Cursor. The Angry Tumblr actually uses the Unicorn AI, which if you ever fought it, should seem familiar to you. The Bat Scepter makes the same sound as flapping wings when used, being rather quiet for most weapons in the late game. Meanwhile, the Celestial Starboard makes the Spectre Boots sound whenever it flies, and it is one of the most annoying things I've ever heard. I've never used the Celestial Starboard as wings without vanity. The Wizard Hat gives an extra minion slot on Celebration Mark 10 worlds for some reason, despite being a magic item. Before 1.4, decoy cultists were called ancient cultists when moused over, but only in normal mode. In expert mode, they still share the same name. I guess this was made to make it marginally harder to differentiate them. Skyward chests used to have a sun-shaped keyhole in them, but it has since been changed to a smaller four-pointed star. In my opinion, it fits the theme better. It seems like Skeletron Prime got his rivets ground down sometime between 1.3 and 1.4. Unlike a Plantera's Bulb, which has its own minimap entry, the Gelatin Crystal will show up as a crystal shard when shown by the minimap. There are many logic gates in Terraria, except the Knot Gate, that one's not included. The Golden Carp, despite being a golden item, cannot be made into any form of food, including the Golden Delight. As what seems to be a brick of solid gold, I'd say that's a good thing. Despite being from the same tier, the Emerald Staff is leagues better than the Sapphire Staff. Not only does it have auto-fire, it can also pierce one enemy, unlike the Sapphire Staff. Quite unfair. 
It is impossible to definitively prove the amount of barrels the mini shark has, as the only frontal view we get of the weapon is this on the achievement. I'd still pencil it in as probable since it looks so thick and different from the barrel found in its successor, the Mega Shark. Light Fruit spawned immediately in hard mode prior to 1.3, but were gated behind a mech boss kill in 1.3. The Portal Gun has the lowest rarity of any Moodlord drop, with it having a yellow rarity. This is typically reserved for post golem items. Relatedly, the Star Wrath is of cyan rarity, one rarity level below red, which is the standard for endgame items. Most of us actually think the Star Wrath is stronger than the Meow Mare, making this a really weird exception. Prior to 1.2, the Star Fury was insanely broken. It was a magic weapon, and whenever you clicked, a star would rain down. However, this was coupled with the ability to rain down stars as fast as you could click, presuming that your mana allowed. Couple this with Minecraft PvP skills or an auto-clicker, and you could basically mimic the modern Star Wrath. The guy changes his quote about the Lantern Knight depending on whether you've killed the Moon Lord. Before killing the Moon Lord, he talks about your recent victories, echoing how you still have more to go. After defeating the final boss, he instead speaks of you saving the world, saying the Lantern Knights have become regular celebrations of your victory. Block swapping on sand only works when you have at least 110% pickaxe power. If you do not have this, you can only swap the topmost layer of the block. This applies to all gravity affected blocks. However, this limitation is lifted to all pickaxes if you are swapping sand with another gravity affected block, or vice versa. Weird, huh? The Garland and Gender Change Potion are the only two items in Terraria that require every herb to craft. The Tombogiri from Old Gen Console is typically written as this, meaning Dragonfly Cutter. However, the Japanese translators for Terraria, Spike Chunsoft, decide to write the name in Katakana, still pronounced Tombogiri. They also made the decision to write Katana in its Katakana form instead of its Kanji form, which is just one Kanji. While the Konomi reading of this is Katana, it also means sword or blade more generally, and they did this to avoid confusion. And finally, the ruler of 1.3 sold for a third of its buy price, the only exception to the 5 to 1 ratio enforced in buy sell prices in Terraria today. Spelunker potions used to give off light on the ores they highlighted, meaning that ores could also light up parts of the minimap. This was changed in 1.2.3 because that was pretty dumb. In previous versions, Spelunker potions would also shine a different bluer tone compared to the uniform yellow orange tone given to ores today. If you shove a giant tortoise in water, it will spin endlessly. This also occurs with its icebound counterpart, the Ice Tortoise. There is a Japanese Terraria wiki for the old gen Japanese version of Terraria, called Terraria CS.arsenserve. As far as I can tell, the Japanese version of Terraria was never released past 1.2, and this wiki is also rather incomplete compared to the international Terraria wiki. If you wish to explore it yourself, this is the URL, and good luck! Visit at your own risk though, I am not responsible if anything bad happens to you. Much like everything the Terrarian uses, the Breaker Blade, if made out of pure iron, would easily weigh thousands of kilograms. The Pearl Stone Brick is made out of pearl sand and pearl stone. Despite being twice as concentrated as its biome spreading components, it itself is completely incapable of spreading the hollow. Before 1.2, only jewels were available to mine hard mode ores. Combine this with a lack of smart cursor and you can probably tell why pickaxe variants are introduced in 1.2. Personally, I have to put up the drill sound in between the Celestial Starboard and with a crack in terms of annoyance. While only showing three swords on the icon, Ghost Stars Infinity 8 is made up of, you guessed it, eight swords. It also happens to be the Wing Vanity I use, since I've gotten a few comments about that. Lazarus Barrier Platform, Eurazer's Spell, the Hoverboard, and Beetle Wings are the only wings that are completely silent. To be honest, I'd expect non moving wings like Arcalus's Light Wings and Ghost Stars Infinity 8 to also be silent, but I guess it never got implemented. The rocket boots let you fly for exactly 100 ticks of real time, or 1.667 seconds. However, they only add 0.7 seconds of flight time when used with wings. The frost spark boots are called shuang hua shue in Chinese, which literally translates to frost flower boots. In the Japanese version of Terraria, fallen stars are called ohoshi-sama. Now, I know that o is an honorable prefix, and sama is an elevated honorific, but apparently it's something about respecting the stars. I don't know man, I'm not versed in Japanese culture. Either way, it doesn't mean Fallen Star literally. As the Jellyfish Necklace is dimmer than that of the Mining Helmet, wearing the Mining Helmet will completely negate the effects of the Necklace. Terraria uses the alternative spelling Absorbent in Lava Absorbent and Super Absorbent Sponge. Many people like myself use the spelling Absorbent with an E. The weapon with the highest armor penetration in the game is the Dark Harvest, as the dark energy it emits ignores 50 defense. This, however, only applies to the dark energy. The Torch God actually has an NVC in the game, ID664. It's only used for the Torch God's beastry entry, though. On the topic of the Torch God, its event is actually called Happy Fun Torch Time in the code. Sure, burning people to death is happy and fun. Okay. Ladybugs are heavily involved in luck in Terraria. For example, their bait power is 17%, an unlucky number in Italy. Touching them increases your luck, but killing or using them as bait decreases your luck. 
As far as I can tell, crafting and catching them doesn't impact your luck, which means you can brew them into potion slush guilt-free. Even then, you actually get positive luck. Much like the umbrella, if you swing the breathing reed, its special effect goes away. This is due to the fact that the tip is no longer above water when you swing it forward. The Life Force Potion doesn't actually give you 20% more HP, but instead 20 HP per full 100. This means that a player with 450 HP doesn't get 540 HP, but 530 instead. You may have noticed this if you ever used a Life Force Potion while having an incomplete amount of life fruit. When you equip the Suspicious Grinning Eye with the Suspicious Looking Tentacle, the Suspicious Grinning Eye will move behind the player instead of its normal position in front of the player. This lets the Light Pet stay in front of the player instead. The Slime Prince buff tooltip is he answers to a higher authority, while the Slime Princesses is she is the higher authority. Does this mean the Prince answers to the Princess? Or the Queen? Who knows? I don't make slime anarcho hierarchies. Developer items drop from every hard mode treasure bag except the Queen's slimes. There is no reason given, but perhaps it's an oversight. Lane 4's Luxury Shampoo has a tooltip brought to you by Lane Corp. This does confirm the existence of large cosmetic corporations in the lands of Terraria. The elusive Lesser Restoration Potion used to be craftable, but in 1.3 the recipe was removed in favor of the Restoration Potion. It was still obtainable through Hell Shadow Chests, though. However, they decided to permanently remove it in 1.4, and without modifications, all Lesser Restoration Potions are replaced with Restoration Potions upon loading. This is also why the Restoration Potion doesn't feature the golden band found on other potions that helps with distinguishing it. It never needed to be distinguished past 1.2, and so while the old sprite has the golden band, the new 1.3 sprite removed it. While the Spectre Pickaxe is slower than both the Drax and Pickaxe Axe, it does have that plus 3 extra range, so I guess some people would want to craft it. The transliteration of Cthulhu in Chinese is Cthulhu. The lizard name is actually a corrupted spelling of lizard, not the obvious English spelling Liza heard. Then maybe I'm just weird. Logic gates in Terraria have green and red on their sprites, but these colors actually mean something. And gates are true and only all inputs are true, so all four corners are green. NAND gates are true when any input is false, so all four corners are red. OR gates are true if at least one input is true, so two corners are green. NOR gates are true if any inputs are false, so the opposite two corners are red. Exclusive OR gates are true if only one lamp is active, so it's a mix of red and green. Exclusive NOR gates are true if the number of lamps is not one, so it's an inverted exclusive OR. Unfortunately, Realogic didn't make it into a truth table, which is quite sad. Maybe in 1.4.5. A lot of native Japanese weapons with Japanese names are written in katakana phonetic script in the Japanese translation, not in their native kanji logogram form. For example, the Shioriken is written as this instead of this, and this is also a pattern seen in the other weapons Tonbogiri and Katana. In fact, much of Japanese terraria is written in kana, largely due to the high amount of foreign loanwords and possibly to appeal to a younger audience. The Japanese Terraria wiki actually writes Shioriken in both katakana and its kanji form, which made its page kind of a pain to find. The International wiki actually doesn't have this fact in the Shuriken's wiki trivia page, unlike the katana and Tanbogiri, so actually someone go add that. Thanks. In the drunk world, both silver and tungsten are present. This causes a problem for the arms dealer who can only sell one type of bullet. To remedy this, he just sells whichever ore is more plentiful in the world. To refresh his decision, simply reload the world. Chippy Gaming passes hero and subscriber count sometime in August 2019, becoming the largest Terraria YouTuber, a title he has held since. He had around 550,000 subscribers at the time, and currently has around 1.13 million. Slime Rain can only occur in a world where the player has at least 140 HP and 8 defense, unless you are in expert mode. It can occur at any time in that world, though the chance is much lower if the standard criteria are not met. There are 14 different sword appearances for the Sky Fracture, all slightly different. Here they are. Every single one of the golfer's names are full names, except for one, William. The truffle's eyes are significantly more recessed and tired looking in 1.3. After undergoing therapy, he's nice and chill now in 1.4. In 1.4, they added plus one range to the laser drill, at the cost of its axe power. Ouch. As the pair of eyeballs refers to retinazer and spasmatism as res and spaz, those seem to be their official diminutive nicknames. Rez still seems a bit weird though, as the Z is its seventh letter in its name. The Eye of Cthulhu has blue eyes, while the twins have red and green eyes. The twins are obviously color-coded through their emissions, and I'm guessing the eye fits in conveniently with the three-color group. Cursed Flames burn green, a color that is not on the black body emission spectrum. This means Cursed Flames contain a chemical that changes the color of light emitted when burnt. For example, Copper Sulfate produces green flames of a similar color when burnt. In 1.2.0.3 and 1.2.1, the Eater's Bone was actually unobtainable because the Eater of Worlds would drop a Blendomatic in its place. 
This is because of, you guessed it, a typo. The Eater's Bone is item ID 994, and the Blendomatic is item ID 995. Both the Ebon Koi and Toxicarp can be caught in the Corruption. Both are also a type of carp. Of all the Beam Swords, only the Terror Beam doesn't resemble the sword in question, at least shape-wise. And finally, considering that the graveyard is made of your own tombstones, wouldn't the ghosts be apparitions of you? I guess it's something to think about. The Vortex Popper and Effervescence are both weapons derived from the Xenopopper, as they both fire bubbles. However, only the Effervescence keeps the Xenopopper's liquid bullet chamber, and this chamber is hidden or omitted in the Vortex Popper sprite. Originally, there were two post-Cryogen bars, Frigid Bars, which were dropped by Cryogen, and Cryonic Bars, mined out of the snow biome. I guess this was confusing, so Frigid Bars were removed. An additional trivia fact about Frigid Bars is that her tooltip was cold to the touch. This was meant to be an addition to warm to the touch and hot to the touch tooltips found on Meteorite and Hellstone Bars in the base game. Calamity has its own rarity system as an extension of the base game. There are six or seven new base rarities. Turquoise rarity encompasses items from right after Providence to the Sentinels of Devour and Poltergast. Pure green is for post-Poltergast to pre-dog. Dark blue is post-dog but pre-yarn items, and violet is for post-yarn items. s tier items have the special hot pink rarity, such as Shatterspec bars and their crafts. Dragon items from update 1.5 onwards have a dark orange rarity. Of course, many items also have their own unique rarities, but we won't be going over that. In the olden days, donated items used to have a special dark red rarity. Nowadays, it just has donor or developer item in dark red or hot pink below, and the items have normal rarity designation. Teratomir is presumably a portmanteau of Terrorblade and Meowmare. Despite this, it doesn't include the Meowmare in its recipe at all. Fabsol's vodka is made from ale. Ale generally has a rather low alcohol content compared to vodka, though I guess this liqueur is magical in nature, so whatever. The robes of Calamity Armor Sprite only seem to use the mantle of the robes, but the armor itself actually encompasses robes as well. Since the Crystal Crusher can destroy Arena Blocks, we can say that Arena Blocks have a pickaxe power requirement of 1000%. The flame sprites for the four candles sold by the Drunk Princess when in an inventory and on the ground are drawn slightly differently. Illustrious Knives have slightly more knives per shot than both of its predecessors. As the extra knife chances are weighted slightly differently, the Illustrious Knives throw a tenth of a knife more per throw on average. The Twinkler Critter, at 40% bait power, is referred to in the Beast Fury as Useful Bait. It is the only critter in Calamity referred to in this way. This one comes courtesy of all the comments on the Vanilla Part 6 video, and I thought it'd be fitting to put it here. Mirasama comes from Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, and apparently in Metal Gear it's a misspelling or mistranslation of the Mirasama Swordsmith and Swords name. So the two are in fact related. The spectral hammers fired by the Ponich Hammer do not resemble the modern Ponich Hammer, but actually the old sprite of the Ponich Hammer. In version 1.2.3.005, released November 30, 2017, Cruptix bars were renamed to Chaotic Bars. Newer players of the mod know these Chaotic Bars as Scoria Bars today. In fact, a lot of stuff related to Chaotic Bars were renamed, with Ataxia being renamed to Hydrothermal, Discordian Wings renamed to Hadal Mantle, and Bar of Life being renamed to Life Alloy, to name a few. On April Fool's Day, the normal status message, The Souls Release, stirred the acidic storms, which is placed after Poltergast is defeated, is replaced with a Boomer Awaits at a 5% chance. Calamitous and Supreme Calamitous speak in the color hash FFA500. This is also the same color used to display the air is getting warmer around you before Yarn starts a second phase. Similarly, Draydown always talks in hash 9BFFFF, except when he asks you to make a choice on which Exomech to spawn. For more Gravitas, he speaks in hash D5040B instead. In Calamity 1.5.1.003, the Profane Guardians got official names outside of just Main, Rock, and Crystal, instead becoming Commander, Defender, and Healer. Despite the Seraph Tracer showing three wings on its sprite, the flying animation only shows two wings, with the middle green stripe showing on top. The same applies to Elysian Tracers, except the color appears in the right place. The Sigil of Calamitous has a missing pixel on the left side of the middle circle, leading me to eternally see the pattern on it as a question mark. I don't know if this is a thing that other people see it as, as well. Pretty much everything made from Meld Construct used to be based around Xerox, a primordial god in the Calamity universe. The alcohol sold by the Drunk Princess grants debuffs with a purple buff background, with the exception of the Fab debuff from Fab Souls Vodka, which is yellow. Much like the vanilla buffs or debuffs, the Titan Scale buff uses the old guide voodoo doll sprite to represent the player. 
While there is an Omega Healing Potion obtainable after the Devourer of Gods, there is no Mana Potion equivalent. Instead, we are left with the Post Moon Lord Supreme Mana Potion. Calamity makes Chlorophyte Bars take 4 Chlorophyte Ore instead of 5 or 6 in the vanilla game, and cuts the Glowing Mushroom cost of Shroomite by a factor of 3. A good QOL feature in my opinion. The Devourer of Cods contains a pun in its name, obviously, and its tooltip also includes a second pun, the Eater of Shoals. Exodium clusters once generated within existing planetoids, but now generate in their own planetoids. The Aquatic Heart used to have two colors based on the color of the question mark question mark question mark entity killed. I remember myself preferring the green buff. On the topic of Anahita, apparently Anahita is the name for a Zoroastrian deity of the waters, which I guess is related to the boss at hand. The color of perennial ore on the map is hash C8FA64, which is a rather energetic lime green. The seafood is made from sulfur sand, starfish, and shark fins, yet it seems to resemble some kind of sushi. Whatever sushi that is, I doubt it tastes good. The Supreme Bait Tackle Box Fishing Station has a seriously interesting name, and while it is great, I don't know why it's called a station. And finally, the Siren Proof Ear must refer to the question mark question mark question mark mob it prevents from spawning as Anahita, not question mark question mark question mark, the chosen name for that mob. The Eclipse Mirror's tooltip is, its reflection shows naught but darkness, which interestingly should make it useless as an actual mirror. Its two precursors, the Mirage Mirror and Abyssal Mirror, seem to hint at the same effect, but aren't as explicit. Calamity weapons have sell prices based on their rarity, from 10 silver for white rarity weapons up to 40 gold for hot pink. There are exceptions, of course, such as Draydon's Arsenal rarity and of course the Mirasama. The Mirasama sells for 50 gold in-game despite being rarity 15, or Violet, which should sell for 30 gold. There might be more exceptions, but there's like a trillion weapons in this mod and I'm not looking through them all. Despite the normality relocator stating that fall speed is doubled for 30 frames after teleporting, the maximum fall speed is actually increased by 3.5 times. I'm not sure about the acceleration though. Dramatized alchemical symbols are used to illustrate the enchantments found in the game. For example, a flame uses a symbol for fire, which makes sense. Meanwhile, ephemeral uses a symbol for air, and resentful uses a symbol for the moon. There's a whole explanation on the wiki which I won't be getting into, but you can read it if you like. The projectile name for the Proton Ripper is the Extraordinarily Cost Inefficient Chainsaw, and the Prism Tooth uses the function Absolutely F***ing Annihilate Trees. The Dragon Fall used to be called the Bumble Burb, and is still internally referred to as Bumble F***, as based off the original name of the boss. Maybe the use of the word F***ing refers to its rapid and public reproduction. The Withered debuff heavily resembles the similar debuff found in Minecraft, down to the buff icon and death message. Prior to the addition of Miracle Matter, Orc Bars used to be a nightmare to craft. This insane list of items has since been reduced down to just Yarn Soul Fragments and Orc Ore. I remember on my recent playthrough of Calamity V1.4, I had a heart attack seeing this recipe, so I'm glad it's been replaced. In extremely old versions of Calamity such as those from early 2019, the suspicious looking jelly bean used to sell for 20 platinum. This meant farming Astrum Aureus post Moon Lord was an extremely efficient way to make money. The Elephant Killer used to do an extra 4% of life per hit to organic targets and had no shot limit per fight in February 2019. Likewise, the Bazooka did an extra 5% of max life per hit on inorganic targets. Hectique used it in a speedrun and I also used it to f***ing demolish yarn on my first playthrough, as the Jellybean allowed me to basically print money. This was fixed along with the Jellybean in version 1.4.2.002, reducing the Jellybean's sell price to 20 gold and setting a cap on the weapons, as well as raising their ammo prices by a bunch. This same 1.4.2.002 update is also the same update that reduced Halibut Cannon drop rates to the lowest, at 0.001% for most enemies. Eutrophic Sand's name is a reference to the process of eutrophication, where water is heavily enriched with nutrients. In real life, eutrophication generally leads to algal blooms, which can be harmful due to them dragging down dissolved oxygen in the water and blocking light. Thanks, apes. The Astrial Defeat's name is a portmanteau of Astrial and Ethereal, and is possibly the most annoying portmanteau in the existence of portmanteaus. Seraph Tracer's Seraph has two meanings. Seraphims are the highest rank of angels in Christianity, and the word Seraph by itself means burning one, which makes sense concerning the wings of the boots. Unlike the set of Calamity dropped from Calamitus, the Calamitus set dropped from Supreme Calamitus consists of three pieces, not just two. The flawless modifier for rogue weapons increases the weapon's value by the most, just over tripling it, with an increase of 209.85%. Calamitous seems not to be a fan of parties, with her dislike of the party girl and willingness to incinerate any party goer that annoys her displayed in her dialogue. With an acceleration of 72 feet per second squared or around 2.23 Gs, 
the Car of Gods handily beats the puny 1.4 Gs of acceleration that the mechanical cart provides. It takes 2.28 seconds for the Car of Gods to reach its max speed of 112 miles an hour, versus 3.3 seconds for the mechanical cart to hit 102 miles an hour. In early 2019, Auric Ore was originally directly used to craft Auric items. Today, they sit at 12 ore to a bar, still by far the most costly bar in Calamity. The Metastasis Tooltip is a contemplated possible future of the Cosmic Serpent, a gruesome warning for those blinded by hunger for power. It insists that the Sepulchre is what the Devourer of Gods becomes if it strives for more power than it can handle. This is opposed to the now-removed future bosses, which were to be more powerful bosses if they were not killed by the player. In this case, the Devourer of Universes appeared normally in his final form. Of course, I don't expect lore continuity like this over so many years. Lola was an accessory dropped by Serene Kalamatus if you beat her after being killed three times before. It would kill you instantly as long as you didn't have iframes, but if your name was Fabsoul, you would become invincible, excluding debuffs and insta-kills. In modern versions of the mod, it is unobtainable but retains its invincibility functionality. According to Revengeance Mode, it's the intended Calamity experience. Technically, Yarn is a pre-Moon Lord boss, as the Dragonfall can be fought without any post-Moon Lord material. If you can beat the hard fight before the Moon Lord, the Afflugent Feathers are enough to make the jungle Dragon Egg. This is why if you look closely, the official Calamity Wiki doesn't refer to Yarn as a post-Moon Lord boss like they do with the Devourer, but as a major boss, which is more accurate. Similarly, as the Eidolon Tablet can be dropped by Eidolists as early as Hard Mode, it is possible to skip the Lunar Events early if you can manage to kill Cultist early. Boss Zen or Boss Effects is multiple times more powerful than the Zen Potion. While Zen decreases spawn rates by 60% and spawn count by 70%, Boss Zen reduces spawn rate by 80% and spawn count by 99.9%. Basically stopping spawns. Both Icarus's Folly and Weak Petrification share very similar buff icons and effects, even though the latter has a much stronger effect, despite it being from an earlier boss. The Particle Accelerator was originally the advanced crafting station in Calamity, usurping both the Hard Mode Forge and Hard Mode Anvil after mechs. It was replaced with the Post Dog Draden's Forge. Nowadays, Draden's Forge was moved to Endgame, and Cosmic Anvil has taken its place as Post Dog. Angiogenesis in the Bloodfin Tooltip refers to the process of blood vessels being formed from existing blood vessels. This seems to have become a problem for the Bloodfin itself. Sirius is named after the brightest star in the night sky, Sirius. This is despite it being an upgrade from the Sun God Staff, and as you probably know, the Sun is slightly brighter than Sirius from Earth. Then again, it says Night Sky, so it gets a pass. And I guess Sirius is brighter in terms of absolute magnitude. The Wolfram Drill is the only pre hard mode drill in Calamity, with the same power as a Copper Pickaxe. When dying from alcohol poisoning in Calamity, the death message can say that your liver failed, which is quite humorous. Another humorous death message is suffer from severe anemia, or are unable to obtain a blood transfusion, which is shown when you die from the health trickle while using the blood boiler, a flamethrower that ostensibly uses your own blood. Part of the Yon Mei's Knife's tooltip is apparently a poem written by a Calamity Mod beta tester about the knife's namesake, Yon Mei. It is not put into the tooltip for beta. The Relic of Deliverance only has a maximum range of around 6,000 blocks, meaning that an entire large world cannot be traversed while riding this weapon. Ancient God Slayer armor is purely a vanity set, unlike vanilla Ancient Armor sets which are all as functional as the normal counterparts. It also has Dark Blue Rarity, which should be for post-dog items. As a Sentinel drop, it should be Turquoise or Dark Green. Many of the fishing rods have quotes or excerpts as their tooltips, with the exception of the Versatile-type fishing rod, which is a description, and the Devourer of Cods, which is a pun. Despite Warped being a debuff, it doesn't actually decrease anything, but just increases your vertical acceleration. I guess this could throw you off a bit, but personally I don't see any issue with this. There are two Wither debuffs in Calamity. The aforementioned Wither debuff is inflicted by the enchantment, and the second Wither debuff is inflicted on enemies by the Flail Rem's Revenge. Instead of taking health like the former, it simply reduces defense by 20. The Archmage dislikes the Cyborg due to the Cyborg's disregard of magic, as he is a technological creature. And on top of that, he thinks he's ignorant. And lastly, the Confetti Gun can be weaponized using Luxor's Gift. Hooray!